Hello and welcome to our first video on matrices. Today we are going to introduce matrices and talk a little bit about the algebraic properties of matrices. So first let's start off by discussing what a matrix is. A uh, matrix is uh, an array of rows and columns and the entries in the array can be sort of anything we want like the real number 2 or the real number e or pi or a variable or I could have a, you know a function occupying one of these spaces in the array or or a vector or pretty much anything I want so it's it's rows and columns and the entries in the rows and columns can be sort of whatever we please so the rows run horizontally so here I'm just sort of circling the rows here. So this matrix has four rows and the matrix has three columns. The columns run vertically. There's our the three columns of the So we would say that matrix A is a four by three matrix. I'll write that down. So A is a four by three matrix. Meaning that it has four rows and three columns. So four by three gives you a sense of sort of how many entries there are in the matrix. So if there's four rows and three columns, there'll be 12 entries in the matrix. And then we have sort of notation where we can denote all of the individual entries. So for example, this three, that three is in the second row and it's in the second column. Uh, this this pi here, right here, that's in the fourth row in the second column. So sort of the way that we denote this is that if I'm calling this matrix capital A, I'll use lowercase a to denote all of the entries. So if I wrote lowercase a and then I subscripted that with four comma two, that would be the entry in matrix A that's in the fourth row in the second column, and that would be pi. If I said, uh, what's A1, uh, comma, 3, that would be uh, in matrix A, the entry in the first row, the third column, that would be 16. So that's just sort of uh, just some notational pieces. Um, notice uh, around the matrix, we've got these square brackets. Sometimes, I mean, you'll see people use parentheses. That's that's totally fine uh, as well. That's sort of interchangeable notation. Uh, and then it's pretty standard to name a matrix with a capital letter. And then when you talk about the entries, use the corresponding lowercase letter. And then the subscripts for the rows and the columns to talk about where uh, in the matrix that particular entry is. And then there's also some notation that that will be sort of familiar like the absolute value bar. So if I wrote the absolute value of A, uh, that's going to return back sort of like the the geometric size of the matrix, uh, which is called the determinant. And that's something we'll talk about sort of later in this video. Like, how, how do we geometrically measure how, how big this collection of numbers or, or vectors or functions or whatever is? Like, how do, how do we make sense of that? So let's start by talking about some basic algebraic properties. So matrices are like numbers in the sense that they sort of have uh, some operations so that I can uh, relate them together. So I basically I can add and subtract. Or, you know, I, ha I have addition as an operation, and and uh, every addition you could also work out sort of the inverse of that addition. So you you have subtraction existing, and then a key, and then you can multiply matrices in certain cases, uh, but there's no real division, so to, so to speak. Uh, you know, not every there's not going to be a multiplicative inverse. Uh, for every matrix. So this is basically we're just going to need to look at some examples here. So let's, I've wrote down four matrices A, B, C, and D. So let's start off by doing some adding. Like let's do A plus B. 
So first of all, if I want to add two matrices, they need to be the same, uh, have the same number of rows and the same number of columns. So matrix A is a two by two, and matrix B is a two by two. So that sort of checks out. That means I can do the addition. Like A plus B makes makes sense. Uh, and then this sort of works out exactly as you would think that it works out. If I want to add these two matrices together, you just add corresponding entries. So this 2 here, that's the number in the first row in the first column in matrix A, you would add that with the corresponding entry in matrix B with the number that's in the first row in the first column. So 2 plus 3 is 5, and then that result goes in the first row in the first column. So this sort of works exactly as you think it would. So uh, 5 plus negative 9 gives you negative 4, 1 plus negative 4 gives negative 3, and 3 plus 12 gives 15. So A plus B, you're adding two matrices together, and the result is a matrix. So now, matrices are different than numbers in the sense that I can take any two numbers I want and add them together, and the result will be a number. But with matrices, uh, you know, if I just pick two matrices, it's not guaranteed that I'll be able to add them together. For example, if I want to add matrices A and C, well, A is a 2 by 2, and C is a 2 by 3 matrix. Well, I can't really add the corresponding entries here because, you know, like, let's say for this matrix C, this negative 3 here, that's in the, in the second row in the third column. There's no number in matrix A in the second row in the third column. So, so in terms of the way adding is defined, where you just match up all of the corresponding entries and add them together and make a new matrix, that doesn't work for all matrices. Because if I pick two matrices of a different size, that's just not uh, no way to make sense of that. So, so A plus C is actually, that's no solution. That's undefined, DNE, how, however you want to say it. It doesn't exist. Let's say I wanted to multiply matrices uh, A and B, I want to do A times B. So this is a, a little bit of a trickier definition. Uh, the way that this goes when you multiply is I'm going to take the entire first row of matrix A, I'm going to match it up with this column in matrix B. So I'm going to multiply the 2 and the 3 going to multiply the 5 and the negative 4 and then add them together. So since I'm taking the first row here, multiplying this sort of, so to speak, by the first column, first row, first column, the result of all of this is going to go in the first row in the first column spot um, in, in the new matrix. So let me just write this out. So it'll be uh, 2 times 3 plus 5 times negative 4. So you're multiplying the first row and the first column and then that goes right in that first spot. So now how am I going to get the 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 rest of the numbers? Well I'll take the first row I'm going to multiply by the second column. So it's going to be 2 times negative 9 plus 5 times 12 and since I'm taking the first row here and the second column the result is going to go in the first row and the second column in that entry spot. So this will be 2 times negative 9 plus 5 times 12. And then to sort of continue this process, I'm going to take the second row, multiply that by the first column, so to speak. So this is the second row of the first column. So the result's going to go in the second row, first column, in this entry right here. This will be 1 times 3 plus 3 times negative 4. And then the last uh, results I'll get by multiplying the second row and the second column, and that's going to go right in this spot in the second row and the second column. So 1 times negative 9 plus 3 times 12. And now I just need to work all of that out here. So I get uh, 6 plus negative 20 is negative 14. I get negative 18 uh, plus 60 is 42, 3 plus negative 12 is negative 9, and negative 9 plus 
36 is 25. Hopefully I didn't make any uh, arithmetic mistakes there. So that is the result. That is A times B. So one uh, sort of trick that's going to keep you all uh, sort of organized here is that if you're taking a matrix that's uh, 2 by 2 and you're multiplying it by, by another or if you're taking any matrix, any two matrices, you want to multiply them together. In order for the multiplication to be defined, the number of columns in the first matrix has to be the same as the number of rows in the second matrix in order for the multiplication to, to work out and be defined. So let's do, let's do an example where we're not multiplying two square matrices, like two matrices together. Uh, that are that have the same exact same number of rows and columns. So let's let's multiply matrix mul matrix C by matrix D. So matrix C is a two by three matrix, and matrix D is a three by two matrix. So the this is going to be defined. This multiplication will be defined because matrix C has uh, three columns and matrix D has three rows. This is all going to work out and the result is actually going to be a two by two matrix. Okay, let's do it. So we're going to take this first row, multiply it by this first column. So we get one times four, zero times zero, and five times negative one. Add up all those results, I believe, and we get uh, negative one. Then uh, we can do the first row in the second column here, and that result's going to go in the first row in the second column. So 1 times 3, 0 times negative 2, 5 times 7, and add up all those results. So that gives me 3 uh, plus 35 is 38. So I'm going to take that second row. Multiply that by the first column, and the result's going to go in the second row in the first column. It'll be negative 1 times 4, 2 times 0, negative 3 times negative 1, so it'll be negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. And then take the second row, second column, and put the result in the second row, second column. So negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7, minus 21 is negative 28. So there is C times D. Notice that if I tried to do sort of uh, to, to see if matrix multiplication is commutative, like if I tried to do D times C, well, matrix D is a 3 by uh, 2 matrix. Matrix D is a 3 by 2 matrix, and matrix C is a 2 by 3 matrix. So we could do this multiplication, and the result would be a 3 by 3 matrix. So if C times D gives me a 2 by 2 matrix, and D times C gives me a 3 by 3 matrix, I mean, I'm, those two multiplications are giving me matrices of different size. So multiplication is definitely not commutative. So this makes matrices a lot more interesting than numbers because you get some surprising results when you just do basic operations like multiplication. If I was just multiplying numbers, 2 times 3, that's clearly the same as, as 3 times 2. But with matrices, uh, the order of the multiplication matters. You can get really weird results uh, just, just by sort of multiplying the matrices in a different order. You can wind up with a totally different answer, two matrices of different size pretty crazy. So matrices, they're going to take a lot of uh, work and thought to, to sort of think through. They're, they're sort of crazy, crazy objects. So let's talk about the whole concept of, of an identity. So uh, when I think identity, I'm thinking that there's, there's two types of identities. There's, there's additive identities, there's multiplicative identities. There's, those are the two that I want to focus on. So like, what if I wanted to just sort of think about this equation that a plus 0 equals a. 
And that's definitely true when you're just thinking in terms of numbers, when you're thinking like where a is just some real number and 0 is the number 0 and whatnot. But you know, this, this concept should hold true if I think about this in terms of matrices. Like matrix A, I should be able to add another matrix to matrix A, but then the result should just give me matrix A. So, so the concept of 0 here, though, is that you know, I can't add the number 0 to matrix A. That wouldn't make sense, because the only thing I can add to matrix A is another matrix that's a 2 by 2 matrix. So, so basically, the additive identity here is just going to be a matrix that's, that's the same size as the, as the matrix in question here, is matrix A. So a 2 by 2, and it's going to have all, all zeros. And that would give me back matrix A. So here, when you're thinking about like this equation, sometimes you'll, books, you'll see books like shorthand a matrix equation like this, but then you just got to be thinking about this very carefully in the sense that, you know, if I take matrix A here, which is this 2 by 2 matrix, then this, this zero matrix, so to speak, it's going to be a matrix of all zeros, but it has to be the same size as matrix A to make the, the addition even make sense. So it's, it's, it's pretty easy to think about the, these additive identities. But multiplicative identities are a little bit uh, trickier. So for example, if I take the matrix A and I wanted to multiply this by 1, so I want to take matrix A and multiply matrix A by another matrix, but I want the result to just be matrix A. So again, this is, I need to think about this because I can't just multiply matrix A by the number 1, that wouldn't make sense. I, I want to multiply by another matrix. So if matrix A is a 2 by 2, I need to be multiplying uh, that matrix by another 2 by 2 matrix to return matrix A. Because think about what I was talking about with matrix multiplication, like if this in the previous slide, if this if matrix A is a 2 by 2 matrix, and my result is a 2 by 2 matrix. That means that in order for the multiplication to make sense, the number of columns in matrix A has to be the number of columns in my multiplicative identity. And then it also would have to have, I'm sorry, the number of columns in matrix A would have to be the same as the number of rows in this uh, ide multiplicative identity matrix. And then it would also have to have the multiplicative identity matrix would have to have two columns for the result to be a 2 by 2. Okay, so what would that be? Well, in this first spot, I would need a 2. So, like, how would I get a 2? I would have to have a 1 here and a 0 here. Because 2 times 1 is 2, 5 times 0 is 0. The result would just be 2 to put the 2 there. But then, you know, how would I get the 5 up here? Well, I would have to have, I believe, a 0 here and a 1 here. Because when you multiply that first row by that second column, 2 times 0 is 0, 5 times 1 is 5. So if you fully work out that multiplication, this is the identity matrix. So what you're going to notice is that sort of the 0 matrix, is, that's easy, has all zeros. But an identity matrix, you need 1s sort of along this diagonal, zeros everywhere else. And then to sort of not get confused with the number one, a lot of times the identity matrix is written as like a capital I. I don't know what the good notation is for a matrix of all of all zeros. Um, I'll have to look that up. I forget what that notation would be. So now, now we got to ask ourselves the question like, could I take matrix A and multiply matrix A by another matrix and get the identity matrix back. So basically I'm thinking, like just sort of a, a side here, thinking in terms of like numbers, like I know that, that 7 times 1 equals 7. But what if I was like taking 7 and I wanted to figure out what number can I multiply 7 by to get 1? 
that's not that hard, that's just one-seventh. Seven times one-seventh is one. So when you're playing these games with, with identities and with thinking about things like a multiplicative inverse, with, with numbers, it's, 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 it's easy. Like, same thing, I know that seven plus is zero equals seven, and if what if I was trying to solve the equation seven plus what gives me zero? Well, that's just negative seven. But with matrices, I, I need to think about this a bit more, like, to figure out what would go here so that when I multiply these two matrices together, I get the identity matrix. That's not like a, I can just like sort of do that really quick in my head. I'd have to sort of think about it. So I sat down and thought about it, and here's what you end up. It's going to be 3, negative 1, negative 5, and 2. So you can, you can check that. If you multiply these two matrices together, you will get the identity matrix. But now the question is, like, how, how did I figure that out? And that's something that I'm, that I'm leaving it up to you all to discover in class. You're going to sort of have to work through uh, trying to figure out things like that with, with matrices. And it's a lot of trial and error and a lot of sort of just problem solving in general. But it's, it's a lot of fun trying to figure out a lot of these properties of matrices. So this brings us to the next slide of inverse matrices. And this is sort of what I was talking about in the, in the previous slide, in the sense that you know this matrix, I can talk about inverses in terms of adding or in terms of multiplication. So if I'm trying to figure out, uh, find a matrix B such that A times B equals the identity matrix, then that only happens if A and B are multiplicative inverse. And then solving the equation, uh, you know, A plus B equals sort of the zero matrix, that's, that's not that hard because, like, in that case, the letter B here twice, because I've already used B up here, so I'm saying, like, if I want to figure out a C such that A plus C equals zero, I mean C wouldn't be that hard to come up with. What would C have to what would C have to C have to, have to be negative two, negative one, negative five, negative three. And then when you add A and C together you'd get zero. So I mean the the additive inverses are pretty easy. But so if A plus C is zero, that only happens uh if and only if A and C are uh additive inverses. So again, we, we sort of figured out uh, what the multiplicative inverse of A was sort of here in, the, in this previous slide. Um, we've got that B is 3, negative 1, negative 5, 2, and that A times B is the identity. So, so A and B are multiplicative inverses. B is the inverse of A. Uh, so, so a lot of times, like, a question will ask you to find A inverse, and they'll denote it with a subscript uh, negative 1. So in this case, the inverse of A, like that, that would be, you know, the, the matrix B here. So a lot of times the notation you'll see is it'll be like A times A inverse gives you uh, the identity. So when you see a superscript negative one on a matrix, that's that's the uh, the notation for for the multiplicative inverse. So A raised to the negative one, that's the multiplicative inverse of A. That's that matrix. So the determinant or the size of a matrix, this is going to be something that we spend a lot of time investigating. So I'm just going to tell you sort of a rule here for two by twos. So the determinant or the size of a matrix, usually you denote it with absolute value bars because that usually denotes size in math. Like when we were talking about numbers, like the absolute value of negative five is five. Because if I plot negative five on the real number line, it's five units away from zero and sort of the size of the number, the absolute value of a complex number is the distance from uh, the origin of the complex plane to that number, so on and so on. So we've, we've seen this, we've used absolute value bars in a lot of different contexts. So for uh, matrix A, sort of, I'm just going to sort of tell you the rule for computing uh, the determinant of a 2 by 2. So it's you multiply sort of these numbers here, 
would be 2 times 3. And then you multiply these numbers here, 1 times 5, but you subtract. So it will be minus 1 times 5. So the, the determinant of matrix A, the size of matrix A, is 1. So what we're going to have to spend time in class talking about is, is what, what does that mean? Like, why is the size of this matrix 1? Like, geometrically, what, what does that mean? So that, that's something we're going to have to investigate and really, really get after in class. So now matrix B, uh, how do we figure out the determinant of this matrix? Well, let's, uh, let's go to the calculator. So 2, 1, just a minus. Okay, so I've got mat matrix uh, B in the calculator. Oh, I put it in matrix A, though. That's, that's really annoying. But whatever, we'll, we'll be able to deal. So it's in the calculator. So let's say I wanted to find the determinant. So if I go into matrix and I go to math, there's all of these awesome uh, sort of operations that I can do with matrices. So determinant is this first option here. So if I pick determinant, and then if I go back into matrix and I pick the matrix I want, I mean, I'm finding the determinant B, but I call the matrix A. That's really annoying. So I hit determinant, hit enter negative 113. So the determinant of matrix B is negative 113. So sort of you have a, I'm giving you sort of a side assignment here, is before you come to class next time, I would actually like you to, to look on YouTube uh, for a video that explains how you find a determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix. There's some awesome examples out there. A bunch of the videos are just a couple minutes long, so that's sort of... I just want you to see see what's out there and check out some other uh, videos on YouTube and be able to do that when you come to class as well. And then we're going to get going investigating matrices. And we're going to do awesome. Good luck.